If you're watching your levels videos in order, <laughs> you just did ignoring the threat where we talked about rainstorms. But today, the ponds are gonna create a full-blown blizzard. And who better to teach us about that than Alaska's strongest ever player, Grandmaster Brian Smith. He was white. The kings are castled on opposite sides and his pawns are already much further advanced than black's pawns. That is definitely a benefit. He started out with f5. Now black does not want this pawn to come to f6 and to have to trade pawns or retreat his bishop back to d8. So black played rook to d8, giving his bishop a little bit of room. Now after f6, of course, it would be very bad for black to make a pawn trade because that would just open up the g file on his king. So his bishop moved back. And now a nice little in-between move is Vichenzug that only grandmasters know about. Queen to f2, that gets the queen to a better spot, but it also wins a tempo on this knight. A nice little extra wrinkle by the grandmaster. So the rook moved over to guard the knight. And now taking on g7 would be okay, but you're not in a good position to make a battery on the f file. So instead, Brian plays h5. Here come those no. pawns. Black better build a snow cave, but he's not gonna be in time. He tried b4, okay, he's doing his best to create his own storm, but he's a little bit too late. So knight to d5, we had a couple of trades happen here. We're gonna fast forward past those. And now, how do white's pawns start storming the king? Pawn to g6, and now everything is getting ripped open. Black decided to play pawn takes g6. I will just say that queen takes a2 is way too slow because after g takes f7 check, white is crashing through first. So let's take a look what happened in the actual game. Ow. F takes g6, but now we had pawn up to f7 check, king h8, let's open up the h file, H Ow. takes g6, we're threatening mate on h7, so black tried h6, but now we've got ourselves a bishop Ow. takes h6, classic sacrifice, and here black could have just resigned, but he decided to capture, Ow. and that leads to mate in two, because queen f6 check, the only move is bishop to g7, and because the bishop's pinned, the Ow. opening of the h file seals the deal. Let's move on to another pawn storm and see if black can survive this one. Here, white already has pawns on h5 and g5, but white builds up for the storm first by playing rook on d to g1. A nice little lesson. If you know those files are going to open, you might as well put your rooks on the files that are about to become clear. Okay, now black tries to get his own storm going. He wants to play b5, but that square is not guarded, so he has to play a6. And you can see how feeble black's attempt is. He's going to be way behind white. And white crashed through, bunch of different ideas here, but bishop Ow. takes h7 was the way to the win. Because after king takes, g6 check, and now things are definitely opening up. You don't want to trade Ow. pawns because that allows the Ow. h file to open right away. That can't be good. So after g6, black played king to g8. And if you were paying attention in the previous video, you might know how white opens up some more files. But wait, before white does so, White throws in his knight takes knight move. A bit of a trap. If you play queen takes knight, I've got a tactic. Pawn Ow. takes pawn, check, forking your king and your queen. And when Ow. you take back to save your rook, you actually get forked on g5. So if we go back to knight takes, black took back with the pawn. And now h6, ignoring this knight, and everything is getting opened up on the king's side. Black tried pawn up to f6. But that didn't work out so well after pawn takes g7. Ow. And white went on to win because the threat is rook to h8, check. And when your king takes, my rook can toggle back to h7 and at least skewer your king and your queen. <gasps> now we've already seen a lesson on opposite sides castling, so I don't want you to think that every pawn storm involves the kings on different sides. In fact, the most famous pawn storm of all time happened way back in the mid-1800s, even before <laughs> your grandparents were born. I know, life did exist back then. Here, black is behind some material, but look at all those pawns running down the board. And black played the shocking queen to e1. Of course, you better not take, because pawn takes rook back. Promotion to queen is checkmate. So, white had to defend his first rank by playing rook to c1. No. And do you see what black did here? Here comes the blizzard, pawn to d2. He just leaves his queen in danger. Unbelievable. Now you can take my queen a bunch of times, but every time you do, she Ooh. regenerates into a new queen by either pawn capturing back. So white tried queen to c5 attacking the rook, but the rook just tucked itself over on the g8 square. And after rook to d1, now of course you don't want to take either rook because the other rook will just take you back. We have kind of the reverse Oreo, right? We've got the cream on the outside and the cookie in the middle. But let's just leave the Oreo where it is and play e3. Unbelievable. Look at these pawns coming down the board. And after queen to c3, now we capture one of the rooks. And after rook takes queen, 
e2, our pawn storm is successful. We're getting multiple queens, and there's no way for white to avoid a catastrophic loss of material. Black may even get three queens to finish things off. Do you want to know what my favorite pawn storm is? It's this game. Now, the game doesn't look like much. In fact, the players have been maneuvering around the board quite aimlessly for the last 20 moves. Nothing has really opened up at all. But here, after knight to c7, White did not just retreat his rook and start circling the board around again. Instead, he played rook to b5. What's the purpose? It's to get more pawns going. Now, after knight takes and pawn takes, this rook is kind of stuck where it is. But wait, we're not done with the fun. We're going to play through a couple more moves rather quickly to get to the really exciting bit. Ow! And... After pawn to c5, you can see the storm is brewing. The rook moved back to d8, king to d4. The king is going to assist the pawns. And what I really want to move forward to is this position. Now, white already has three pawns, but only one of them is passed, the d5 pawn. Black thought he was breaking up the storm by playing pawn to b6, forking the rook and the pinned pawn. And indeed, if you move your rook, Black can just take on c5 with his rook, and that really makes all of white's pawns isolated and weak. So what did white do? White guarded the pawn, not the rook. That's right. Pawn to b4. Unbelievable. And after takes and takes, our pawns are four wide. It's four pawns and a knight against two rooks. Now, it's impossible to evaluate this position 100% accurately, but you can probably guess if it's in the video, white went on to win. I will fast forward the game rather quickly just to show you how things ended. A6, and there's really no stopping these pawns. Black is trying to gain activity by actually giving white a fifth pawn. And the pawns march forward, and the knight invades, and the king invades, Ow. and black tries to gain some activity, but after knight to b7, the pawns keep on Ow. coming, and one final little wrinkle by white, pawn to f6 to distract the king, and Ow. after king takes pawn to c7, multiple pawns, multiple queens, and there's nothing these rooks can do to stop it. Boys and girls, pawn storms are most common when kings are on opposite sides of the board, but they also sometimes happen in the middle of the board, and they can overwhelm an entire army. <laughs> so you can see, chess kids, the point of the pawn storm can either be to open files for a checkmate, or it can be to keep those pawns connected, march down the board, and make some promotions. Either way, be careful of that blizzard.